What's going on Medicare Billing Group? Tony Maritato here. In this video, I'm gonna take you through the scenario that comes up relatively frequently. You're treating a patient. Let's say it's a Medicare beneficiary. They've been referred to you for shoulder pain. Now, two, three, four weeks into care, that same patient comes with a new referral for a different condition. It could be from the same physician. It could be from another physician. I just had a scenario a couple weeks ago where a patient was coming for low back pain. They slipped, they fell, they injured their knee. An orthopedic surgeon, a different physician from the original referring physician, sent that patient back to me with an order for physical therapy for the knee pain. So what do we do in this scenario? I hear so many different little bits and pieces of advice, but I don't hear the references. Like, where are you coming up with this information? So let me show you where to find the answer. Let me show you where the reference is. And then let's talk about some different scenarios and how you can handle it. And if you watch at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you on a CMS 1500 how I would code the visit in which you're doing treatment for the original condition and you're doing an evaluation for the new condition. I'm gonna show you how to code it, how to use the diagnosis pointers, and what to do. So stay tuned. All right, guys, here is my screen. And what you see here is chapter 15. Let me see what page we're on, 162. So I'm gonna jump up here so you guys can see the document. So this is the Medicare Benefit Policy Manual, chapter 15. You should be familiar with it. Make sure you're looking at the most recent version just because this has been updated as of February 1st, 2019. If you scroll down to section 220, 220 is where all the magic happens in my opinion. You can find information here related to plans of care, 220.1.2. So once we jump down here, you can find the information for PTOT and speech about establishing a plan of care and what's required in the plan of care. But this is really the section that we want to address today in this video. What happens when you have two plans of care? So just to pull directly from the guidelines, it's acceptable to treat under two separate plans of care when different physicians refer a patient for different conditions. This was the situation that I had where the primary care referred the patient to me for low back pain, then a local orthopedic surgeon referred the same patient to me for knee pain. I could have two separate plans of care, um, one for each physician. It is also acceptable to combine plans of care into one plan covering both conditions if one or the other referring physician is willing to certify the plan for both conditions. And this is really what I find myself doing more frequently. Um, the patient in question has an active plan of care for low back pain. She gets injured, hurts her knee, goes to an orthopedic. The orthopedic says, do therapy for your knee. Okay, she's still under the medical management of the primary care physician who, who issued the initial referral. I will do an evaluation for the knee. I will bill an appropriate evaluation CPT code based on the complexity of the evaluation and the situation. In this particular situation, based on medical history and, and comorbidities, I determined and used 97162 for my evaluation CPT code. But what I did was I went ahead and did the evaluation for, or rather with the primary care physician's name on the plan of care. I CC'd and sent a copy with the patient's permission to the orthopedic physician, but the orthopedic surgeon was not gonna do surgery on this patient. The orthopedic had no interest in seeing this patient for a follow-up. The patient wasn't gonna go back for surgery or injections or anything else. And based on kind of the history and what I understood about the patient at that point, I determined the patient was more likely and more appropriate to come under 
the plan of care and the supervision of the referring physician. So I took what could have been two separate plans of care, combined them into one per Medicare guidelines. The treatment notes continue to require time codes, treatment minutes, you know, everything else is the same. Progress reports should be combined if possible to make clear uh, that the goals for each plan of care is addressed. So when I combine my plans of care, I included three additional goals relative to the knee condition. I included those on my original plan of care through basically a progress note and addendum um, so that when I do future progress notes or a discharge summary, my original goals are intact and my additional goals are intact. Separate progress note reports referencing each plan of care may also be written. So if I was gonna keep these two scenarios separate, and I'll tell you in just a minute when I do that, at the discretion of the treating clinician or at the request of the certifying physician, but shall not require shall not be required by the contractor. Okay, so when do I keep two plans of care separate for the same patient? It's usually when there's a personal injury case involved or a worker's comp, auto accident, something like that. So about two years ago, I had a situation where a patient was referred to me following a motor vehicle accident. We were treating her for neck pain and probably about four or five weeks into it, she slipped she fell, she tweaked her back. She experienced an acute onset of low back pain. Now the low back pain had nothing to do with the original neck and shoulder pain from the auto accident. There were different, different physicians involved, different case managers, everything was separate. The low back pain was gonna go through primary insurance, uh, health insurance, whereas the motor vehicle condition was gonna go to the personal injury the motor vehicle uh, claim and was probably going to get settled through court. So we kept those as individual separate plans of care. We maintained separate progress notes. We maintained separate treatment notes. Although we treated both conditions on the same dates of service, we would essentially do 30 minutes of treatment on one condition in one medical record. And then we would do another 30 minutes of treatment for the second condition in a separate medical record because we wanted to be able to clearly delineate what was related to the auto accident and what was related to the, the injury that she sustained and the acute onset of low back pain. So that would be probably the main scenario in which you wanna keep the two plans of care separate. But if we're talking about probably the more common scenario, patient you know has low back pain they have hip pain they have knee pain they have ankle pain they have shoulder pain they have neck pain it's one of those things where you bring it in you combine the plans of care you evaluate the new condition you determine new uh, goals for that condition a new um, prognosis for that condition maybe the two plans of care align maybe they don't for example if it's a short-term condition that you believe will get better within three to four visits but they also have a more persistent chronic condition that's probably going to take 12 to 15 visits you can have documentation within a single plan of care that says we're going to treat the knee pain once a week for the next two weeks or once a week for the next three weeks and we're going to treat the neck and shoulder pain twice a week for the next eight weeks right so you can kind of set up those delineations within the plan of care within the prognosis um, it's not a big deal but i want you to find and see the resource that you're going to use to justify your decision and if you're you're a, a clinic owner and you have employees and clinical staff underneath you you need to be able to show them where the resources are because many of them are going to come to you with these kind of crazy ideas and you know hearsay and rumors that they learn through clinical practice somewhere else but you need to be able to show them, look, this is what Medicare is saying. This is what we're going to do. And then you establish an internal business policy on how you handle this situation in the future. And you base that business policy on established CMS guidelines that are published 
and universally accepted. One of the things that I see kind of holding a lot of people back as business owners is they just don't have the policies in place to support the decisions. Procedures and policies are the backbone, the spine of your business. You do not have a business if you don't have procedures and policies. So these are things that if you need help, Nancy Beckley, once again, has some great resources on the topic, um, but you have to build structure within your business support to support your decisions moving forward. Guys, I hope this answered the question about what to do when you get a new referral for an existing patient for a second condition. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'm going to keep working my way through this manual um, just because there's a lot of answers to your questions in here and I think people just don't quite know where to look but now you know. Guys, I'll catch you in the next video. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, support the channel, comment, like, share these videos because without your help, the channel won't go anywhere. I'll catch you next time. All right, guys, here we are, bonus content time. So this is a PDF document that you could fill out and I'm just going to create this as if we were looking at the scenario I mentioned earlier. I treat patients in my clinic, so we've got date of service, place of service. Let's say um, the original diagnosis was low back pain, and now they're going to come to me. I know in the um, video I mentioned knee pain, I'm going to say difficulty walking. So what we're going to do here, so now this is the new diagnosis. I've been treating the patient in this scenario for low back pain for three weeks. This is a standard follow-up treatment on January 1st, 2019, place of service 11. I'm going to be doing um, therapeutic exercise. I throw in my GP modifier. Now, normally... I would just use diagnosis pointer A. And let's say we're doing two units, $50 a unit. This would have my MPI number in there. Um, this is the rendering provider MPI. Please remember that. Whoops, let me do that. Okay, now let's say we're looking at the same data service. Still in my facility and I'm going to do manual therapy and this is going to be one unit sorry about that one unit of manual therapy and now th so this is what a normal claim might look like right actually since we're saying a usual claim let's say this is my usual claim. But now on today, I happen to get a referral and I'm going to do an evaluation on R262. So what I would be doing and we said 162 in terms of complexity and this is going to be for diagnosis B. All right, now you have a couple variations on this. So let's say, for example, I don't just evaluate the difficulty walking, but I also treat the difficulty walking with therapeutic exercise, but I don't treat the difficulty walking with manual therapy. This is what the claim would look at, would look like. Now let's say a patient comes back two days later And we are, we've combined the plans of care and we're going to do therapeutic exercise, two units, and we're going to do manual therapy.
two units. So now you understand, like maybe I didn't do the manual therapy on the eval day um, because I spent my time evaluating the difficulty walking, but on the second treatment that include both diagnoses, I'm doing two and two. Maybe I'm gonna do three and one. Maybe I'm still not gonna do any manual therapy for the difficulty walking, but I'm gonna do three units for both conditions one unit of manual therapy for just the one condition. So this is what this section of the CMS 1500, the electronic claim form is gonna look like. You know, if you have any questions, need further clarification, this is the kind of stuff that we go through in my course, but please post a comment. Let me know what your questions are. Let me know if something looks out of place or just doesn't look right to you. Otherwise, guys, again, thank you for watching. This concludes this section of bonus content. Catch you guys in the next video.